Hello guys, this is the Epiphany, and today I'd like to show you another Colosseum fight with my Osamaraz, Anutroth, and Io. From now on, all of my Colosseum videos for Dofus will have commentary in them, and I will explain the steps which I took of winning the fight. So if you do happen to face me in the game, then you'll know what my strategy is and be able to encounter it. Uh, so we just jumped into the fight, we've got a Sram and a Ripsa and Fekka on the other team. Now, judging from this fight, they have shields and heals, and they also have erosion. So you can tell it's going to be a cancer fight already. So what needs to be done in this fight is splitting the Fekka up from his team to prevent him from, from shielding them. And we need to use erosion ourselves to try and beat um, to try and reduce their max HP down so they can't heal. Once again, I used initiative trophy on my Inutroph, but we did not out initiative the other team because they have a higher average initiative than us. So I put on my AP resist trophy on my Iope and Osa because Fekkers tend to AP rape a lot and they have an Annie there which. Maybe a chance any. I don't know yet, but we'll find out. They can also AP rape a lot. So the Fekker is going to wait until the next turn to shield his team because he can't shield both of them at the moment. Uh, so what I do here is I get out of the glyph, so I get my range back, summon a leaving bag, and then I just shovel throwing because I can't really do anything else at the moment. We are advantaged because my Anitroph goes right after their Fekka. So I can unbewitch like um, Bastion or Barricade if he tries to do uh, ranged and close combat immunity. The SRAM is agility by the looks of it. He might be a bit of strength and int, but seeing as though he used insidious poison, he is agility, I'm pretty sure. As I stated at the start, this is going to be a cancer battle because it is relies purely on erosion. It's not possible for me to one turn someone here because the Fekker won't allow that. They're gonna he's gonna keep his team fully shielded at all times. Yeah, so I just buff up my sword of fate and um, divine sword and weapon skill and prepare for a turn three attack. If some of you guys don't know what erosion is, because that's a word I have been using a lot, um, even before I started commentary on my videos. Erosion is the process of reducing the maximum amount of HP the, that the target has. So for example, the strand has 4,233. If you erode him and then you hit him with damage, a percent of the damage he suffers will be reduced from his maximum HP. And because of this, he will not be able to get healed back. And this is why it's very important for fighting, especially against an any, because if you don't put erosion on him, the any will just keep healing his HP back up. So now the Fekker is going to shield his team because they're all together now and Rampart is three squares around him. I think he put a coward there so that my Enutroph does not have a line of sight to unbewitch. However, I just simply unsummon it. I give fortune so that the following turn Villarin can have 300 power. Yeah, it, unsummoning is just like an easy kill for summons. I unbewitch the Fekker, minus one effect duration. Oh no no no, I use bribery to cancel his turn so the next turn he can't teleport in, gravity glyph or anything like that, that'll stop Villarin from attacking. Right about now the Shrimp is setting a trap chain 
which is a series of traps where they're all linked to each other. So let's say I jumped in over there. If I'm in optimal position, he will push me into a trap and then the chain will make me travel, like go from trap to trap and it could do like 5,000 damage if I'm not careful. It's a common trick that SRAMs use because when enemies get close, that's when they can set off the chain. Yeah, I'm just buffing up my eye, preparing for next turn's attack. The any has really nice resistances. 40% above for all, all the main resistances, except for neutral, but neutral is not really important. Considering he heals pretty decently on Puzzling Word, I'm assuming he's intelligence. He's running away so that Villarin can't hit him. So now what I do with my Osa is just transform to dragon state and then summon a dragon. The reason I, I killed the Gobo was to gain some, some AP so I can give MP and AP to Villarin. And I, I still have enough AP to summon a dragon and high energy shot it. Unfortunately the dragon is not does not have enough MP to unwish the Ender Ripsaw. I didn't want to give MP to the dragon because I figured it'd be more important to give it to Villarin. Fekka's turn is passed because I bribed him before. Use Greed for some extra power, MP Villarin, so he reaches. However, I didn't calculate the amount of MP properly. I was planning to hit the Ana Ripsaw, but I did not have enough MP to reach her with jump. I think I was like one short or something. I rape his range so he can't set up traps around Villarin. He's gonna go invisible anyway because he knows that I'm about to like try and one turn one of them. He makes the Fekka invisible and then he pushes with fear. I don't know where he pushes to because fear has like seven range. It could be any one of the two to sevens. Considering he ran up and used fear again, the Fekka is probably like near the other side of the map anyway. And the SRAM has moved, so the only way, like the only form of damage I can do is to the Ender Ripsaw. I cannot jump on him because I'm one range short. Therefore I have to jump and then use Blow. Actually I didn't use Blow, I just hit like that. I put Erosion in him. Because max HP now is 3,800. The reason I didn't use Precipitation because it, it wouldn't have been worth an extra 4 AP just to use another sort of IO. I wanted to wait until the following turn where I'd actually have a chance of one turning him because he doesn't have any shields left. Although I won't have my power and fortune buff, I'll still be able to do some decent damage. Oh, it looks like I forgot to put my AP Lost Resist Trophy on the, my IOF. I think it was because I didn't want to get raped by the SRAM or something. Alright, the Kony just healed the SRAM and it showed up where the SRAM was. I give MP to the Dragon so it can reach the SRAM. I control the Tofu to swap the dragon up. I don't know, I swap Villarin back. Because if Villarin is over there, the Fekka is also over there somewhere. And I don't want Villarin to get 
trapped by a gravity glyph and um locked by the fecker because when I'm in there I'm pretty much useless I can't jump out I can't dodge because my eye only has like eight dodge or something I unbewitched myself to get rid of the paralyzing trap which I was affected by the SRAM yeah the SRAM is there because the Kony showed where he is when he healed him now the SRAM is unable to reach my IO to use Jinx. Jinx is a spell that minimizes the damage that I can do and it does it prevents me from getting any crits. Alright, so the Fekka decided to go for my Enotroph instead. He teleported there and put a gravity glyph. I personally don't think there was any need for a gravity glyph because I can't release anyway. I went for the Ender Ripsaw because the Ender Ripsaw had um, Erosion on him. Then I hit him there and then I just MP raped him so he can't run away. I'm not sure what the SRAM is doing. He hasn't moved yet. Oh, he just moved. I think he's going to erode. Yeah, he's putting erosion on me, okay. So, what happens now is that I need to try and prevent my Enitrol from getting hit because every time he gets hit, his maximum HP goes down. This means that he won't be able to get healed up. Now, I'm just going to go maximum damage on the Enoripsa. It was a good thing I did not use Precipitation the previous turn. Of course, the sword does not crit. He has 817 HP left, and his max HP is also much lower. 2582. He's unbewitching the erosion of him, and he's running to heal his team by shielding himself first. He's healing himself and his team as well as hitting my Enotroph. My max HP is 3600, I have 2300 HP at the moment. So that means I got eroded around 600. I use Fossil on my Enotroph to give him some damage sustained because I don't want him to lose that much HP. I decided to whip twice in, instead of using my heal bow because it only costs 4 AP so I can have 7 AP left to spam some summons because they will come in handy later on it just becomes annoying for the enemy. I knew the Tofu was going to push the Enoripsa away, which is a bad thing, because my, my eye cannot hit him. But there was nothing I could do about it. It was either heal and support my Enutroph or prevent him from, or prevent the Tofu from reaching. And I figured since my eye is on minus 4 AP turn from Precipitation, it would be better to support my Enutroph. Now the Gobble finally kills the Doppel from turn 1, and now it's coming. Alright, uh, he puts Barricade on the SRAM. This prevents me from doing any damage that is close combat. Backlash also does 170 damage because, firstly, I have 49% resistance of Earth and I have Fossil on me. Hammerchill was quite weak as well. I don't know why he's so weak. Normally, that, spell, uh, that weapon does like 1000 damage anyway. He puts a glyph of repulsion. So if I the glyph of repulsion basically if I end my turn on the glyph I lose HP. And I had to had no choice because I couldn't dodge them both, they're too much lock. 
putting more erosion on me. Kills my gobble and then he's just hitting. I decided to give vitality to my Indushoff to prevent him from dying, even though it's 424, still better than nothing. I went there to block the and a Ripsaw, but he's smart and he AP rapes us both. This is where I'm starting to think that I should have worn my AP resist trophy. Now he pushes and hits us all, and he heals himself along with it. My Tofu is dead. I don't really mind though, but I could have gained like some AP from it if I used Call to Order. Manutroph has max 3189 HP, which is pretty bad, because 424 was from the Vitality anyway. I gave AP to Villarin so she could possibly one turn someone. Probably the any. And then I summoned double dragons to unbewitch shields and all that stuff. I unbewitch the shields of the Fekka. Then I just hit the Fekka with my other dragons. The Gorbal should not have went there because firstly he lost health from the glyph and secondly he prevented my second Wormling from hitting it. Red Wormling. But what do you know? You can't really do anything with summon so yeah. Alright Bastion. Long range and vulnerability. So basically, if the Enerypsa gets hit with any long range spells, it will do zero damage. So the only way for my Io to kill kill her is to jump on her and hit. I'm, I've no idea why he used Truce on the same turn as Rampart and Bastion. He could have just used Truce. There's like no need for any of that other stuff. Alright, uh, this is where I run the hell away because I, I'm like, I got a ton of erosion on me and I don't want to like lose any more HP. Just run away and then stay there. The SRAM is going to erode my Osa and Iope, I think, because we're in optimal position for him. Yeah, here we go. He's going to erode us both. I'm not sure why he didn't use Jinx. He just leaked Pied, which is pretty useless. I can't do any damage this turn, so I decided to just buff up and prepare, prepare for next turn to do some damage. The spell Truce is actually, it's not, it's not like an immunity, it doesn't make you invulnerable, it's just reducing your damage by 11,110. So if you are eroded and you still lose HP, oh no no, if you're eroded and Truce has been cast and someone hits you, you still lose max HP even though you're not losing any HP, if that makes sense. So... Some cheats that have a eroder on their team tend to use truce and then let that eroder hit the hit the person that's been eroded already. So they're still losing max HP, and because of that, their current HP goes down along with it. Just like my Osamadars lost um like 200 max HP, even though I didn't lose any normal HP, my my normal HP went down. 
What I decide to do here is push the Fekker away extremely far so he can't he can't shield his uh, team or anything like that. I don't think he can teleport either because it's on cooldown. I might be wrong. But teleport only has 6 range anyway. So I've pushed him down extremely far. At the moment I have uh, 7 summons out which is pretty good. Maximum I can summon is 9, well for this fight anyway, because I've recorded this fight like a few days ago, but I just bought a new Exo Mage, so now I can actually do 10 summons. Any is losing pushback damage because Truce only reduces damage, it doesn't reduce pushback and poison now the fact that the fecker is all the way over there he can't really do anything over here he already used barricade and bastion like recently so it's on a cooldown so i decided to all right so luckily i used bribery on the second turn before it has five turns cooldown so now i can bribe the the sram And it just works out because I bribed the SRAM so that my IO can go for a for an attack on the Eneripsa and hopefully kill him. I use greed to boost some additional power, then I bribe. Running away because I'm still eroded. Hopefully I can kill because 2200 HP isn't much. However, the sword decides not to crit. Lucky, very lucky. Intimidation crit, so I was able to kill. So now the rest of the fight is pretty much holding them back. I've now reached my maximum summons, which is 9. Considering the healer is dead, the rest of the fight is actually pretty easy. You just gotta kill like... Well, considering this team, they have an eroder, a shielder, and a healer. So it doesn't really matter which one you go for, like if one of them's dead, you pretty much win the fight. I only wish the greed from the SRAM. Now I just hit the Fekker. The Fekker is, I think, going for my Enitroph. Yeah, he is. They're not giving up yet. They're still trying to kill my team. I MP raped the SRAM so he can't reach my Enitroph. And then I run away so that... Alright, you remember at the start of the fight how I told you about the trap chains? I just activ activated part of the chain there. I'm pretty sure there's around like 5 or 6 other traps in the area. And if I if I walk into like a certain position, it will activate them more, then I'll possibly be dead. I'm pretty sure the SRAM was planning on like having the main like combat area around the area where my Enotroph is. However, because my IO jumped to the IO, Oh no, my eye jumped to the any on the third turn. They all decided to make the like combat area up there. So we got lucky with the fact that the traps were down here. So it didn't really affect us this fight. But in future, there are a lot of SRAMs that tend to make trap chains like that. And you've got to be careful.
I decided to kill the Gobble because it's pretty useless. I healed a dragon so it doesn't die because it's got high energy shots, so it's pretty strong. Then I summon another two dragons. I could not have been able to summon another two dragons if I didn't kill the Gobble because, like I said, my maximum summons is nine. Yeah, the rest of the fight is uh, pretty much self-explanatory. Just do whatever. You can't really lose from here unless you're like really bad. The Fekka is still not giving up. For some reason I log out here. Apologies for that, I just logged out for like no reason. I think there's something wrong with my internet. Anyways, they're, they're not giving up at all. They're doing like a lot of damage to us. However, I think it's time we end the fight. And I just wasted Spiritual Leash on another summon, so it looks like I have 10 summons, but I actually have 9. Yeah, so you guys can see that this fight was pretty cancer. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next fight.